almost like you're kneading dough, gently pulling, squeezing as you move the, around the body of the doll. And just gently roll those fingers through the fur and squeeze gently. Roll up and then squeeze down. Gently slide them in to massage that inner ear. I have used these little brushes to brush Remy's face until he has completely melted and has been hypnotized and fallen asleep. I like to come in with a bit of effleurage after any other type of massage just to gently release any of that tension. One, two, three, four. Hello and welcome to this dog massage tutorial. I have a very special guest with me today. This is Remington and he goes by Remy. Remy is a 10 year old mixed breed dog who has been adopted and I've had him as my loving companion and friend for the past 10 years. I'm going to be showing you some techniques today to massage your dog. This is a beneficial activity for both you and your dog. It provides relaxation for both the pet and the owner. It also is a form of preventative medicine. When you have your hands on your dog like this, you're going to be aware of any issues that they might be having much sooner than if you just relied on regular vet visits. One thing to keep in mind is that your dog will let you know what feels good and what doesn't, so you should listen to the nonverbal communication from your pet. And they might get up, and that's okay. They might present to you certain areas of their body that they'd like to be massaged. I usually like to start the massage on the face of the dog. There's a deep amount of trust when the dog lets you touch their face or their neck area. The neck actually is the area where their mother would have grabbed them to carry them. And so there's a great deal of trust conveyed when your dog lets you touch you and touch them in this area. You'll notice that the fur around their neck is incredibly loose. You can actually take that and squeeze it and move it back and forth with a gentle tugging motion. This is reminiscent of when their mothers would carry them and it can create a very soothing, very relaxing sensation of trust and comfort in the dog. If your dog likes to chew on bones, as most dogs do, the mass of their muscle here in the jaw can become sore. So it can be a nice little massage to rub the cheekbone just like that. Whenever you're touching your dog's face, you want to be aware of their whiskers. They are very sensitive. And so you want to touch the face with intention and make sure you move in the direction of the whiskers. I'm just going to rub that masseter muscle right like that on the cheek right there. Just gently. I like to support the animal's head whenever I'm massaging that area there. Just like so. There we go. The other thing I like to do on the face is take the main four fingers of my hand. I put one hand on the back here and then I will move 
his fingers up over his forehead and just gently roll those fingers through the fur and squeeze gently. Roll up and then squeeze down. Roll the fingers up and squeeze down. One part of the dog that is incredibly relaxing to have touched is the ears. And you do want to be conscious because they're very sensitive. One way to massage the ears, and this is easy if you have a dog like Remy that has pointy ears, is to just gently cup the back of the ear and then squeeze up. And just gently like this. If touched gently and correctly, the ears are an incredibly relaxing part of the dog that they find almost hypnotizing. That's one way to massage the ears. The other is to cup the ear with one hand and then take the pads of your fingers and gently slide them in to massage that inner ear. Being conscious that the nails don't um, poke or prod the ear. And then just rolling the ear gently, kind of like a little pancake between your fingers, just gently rolling the fingers just like that, just so gently, gentle, 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 and you can see that he is pretty much falling asleep right now because this is just so calming for the dog, and you don't have to sit up a special time to must do a full body massage. You can use little portions, little pieces of what I'm teaching you today. And just sit down by your dog and gently rub their ears and their face. This is an activity that I like to do before bed. It really relaxes me and it relaxes my dog as well. It's very calm calming and sets us both at ease. It's kind of a nighttime ritual. Just like that. And I do believe that Remy is snoring, so I believe we've had success with the calming activity of massaging his ear, just like that. And the main technique that I use when massaging is effleurage, and that is just a gentle sweeping down the body. I make sure that my fingers stay relatively together without splaying out. When your hand is more like a paddle, it is more soothing to the dog. There's full contact with no space in between. Just like that. And I just massage and roll my hand all the way across his body. I kind of do it in a circular motion, applying a decent amount of pressure, but nothing that's going to be anything but relaxing. I like to massage on the floor because it provides a firm base. So that when I do press into the dog, there's a little bit of resistance from the floor and it makes this, the massage I'm allowed to get in deep while still being gentle. I do effleurage over the whole body of the dog and I keep my movements slow, steady, and rhythmic. Rhythmic being very important because it allows the dog to predict where your hands will be next and allows them to enter a state of deep calm and relaxation. It's important to care for your pet in all manner, including their diet 
exercise, attention, and massage is an excellent one way to bond with your dog, connect with them, very soothing activity, very good for both the human and the dog. As you're performing the effleurage on your dog, you can say things to them that will provide comfort, and even though your dog doesn't understand what you're saying, they do understand your intention. So as long as you say it in a manner with an undertone of exactly how you mean it, with kindness, gentleness, your dog will pick up on that. I like to say things like, you are such a good boy. Yes, you are. You are very sweet, and you're very gentle, and you guard the house all day, and you keep me company. You can even hum if that is something you like to do and the vibrations of your voice can offer a sense of security, a reminder of your presence to your dog. And you don't even have to be good at it, just gently hum. Mm see that Remy has decided he would like a little bit of belly scratches and he's letting me know and that's normal. Just pick his little head up and move it back onto the pillow. Oh my goodness, that's a big dog's eye for such a little guy. Yes, I love you. Stay right there, good boy. The next technique that I will be teaching you today is petrosage, and it's very similar to effleurage, except that, yeah, did you have something to tell me? You're doing so good. Yeah, you are. Thank you. One of the, th it's very similar to effleurage in that it has a very similar type of movement. Um, but instead of just gentle swaths back and forth, you're actually kind of kneading the skin very gently, kind of squeezing it between the fingers, being mindful not to pinch. And I do splay my fingers out a bit, and I gently pull and maneuver the skin and the fur underneath my hands. It's a little bit more vigorous, almost like you're kneading dough, gently pulling, squeezing as you move the, around the body of the doll, being mindful that some areas are more sensitive than others. And I just like to do a petrosola, squeeze a little bit here, squeeze there. Hello, are you having a massage and it feels so nice? It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, what a big yawn. And just moving with the petrosage all around the body. Another technique that you can use is called debutante. And for this method, you're going to use the pads of your fingers. And you're just going to press gently into the area, just like this. Just do little debutantes. And... This is particularly effective if your dog has an atrophied muscle, an injury, an area of tightness or tension. A little bit of dip you don't. And 
And so you just tippy tap 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 like that. And after I'm done with the tippy tops, I come in with a little bit of effleurage, gently releasing that area. Now the human equivalent of tippy tot is when you have a the ch -ch 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 kind of karate chop type of massage, and that is a little bit harsh, so the pads of the fingers are recommended. And as you can see, Remy has let me know that he would like his belly massaged. Now that is the classic area that a dog really likes to be scratched and rubbed because they can't reach. If you have long nails, you can raise your fingers up so that the tips can get a little bit of scratching in. And that feels so nice on a little belly like that. And just as I mentioned before, your dog will let you know what areas they like which areas they don't, and that's just fine. I'm gonna pick his little head up and move him back on the pillow. There we go. I know, you do so good, and you're such a good guy. And you're getting a lot of massages, huh? Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if your dog has an injury or there's an area of tension, you can practice what's called systemic compression. So you'll find, you know, the knot or the area that you're concentrating on. Just go in and gently find it. And then take the pads of both of your thumbs. Roll down until you find it. Hold with moderate pressure for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four. What this will do is it'll momentarily stop the blood flow and then when you release it will rush in and help relieve that tension and that knot. If your dog is uncomfortable or resists then you should prematurely release and that's just fine. I like to come in with a bit of effleurage after any other type of massage just to gently release any of that now, I was working on this area of the tricep right here when I was doing the systemic compression. And anytime I'm near a joint or bony area, I make sure that I'm never directly on that area and that I'm very conscious of it. One thing I will do is when I have his arms out like this, I gently roll my fingers down, and I might check the mobility of the area. Gently pull, and then release. Just like that. Thank you. The other thing I like to do is check the feet. Remy's feet are very sensitive, but it is important. And they're kind of like the tennis shoe of the dog, so if the hair is out and too fluffy, you might want to trim it. The other thing you want to check is the nails. You want to make sure that they are not um, too long, otherwise that's like walking on high heels. It's very uncomfortable. You can add a little bit of flexation, a little bit of compression there on the toes. I know, I know. And Remy's toes are very ticklish and sensitive, and so he lets me know that I'm very gentle every time. Every time, very gentle. And the more you handle your dog's feet, the more comfortable they will be with you touching them. That is an area of the dog that can be particularly sensitive. And if they're not interested in letting you touch them there, that's okay. You can just give them that space and slowly work your way there. There we go. Now, one other thing that I like to do is, just like a human, when someone scratches your back with their nails, it can 
feel really good is I like to take my nails and run them along his body just like that. Just like that. Run them all down his back. Sometimes I like to hold his head like this and provide him a bit of reassurance. I can run, I can move his hand here a little bit just like that to massage his neck while I'm moving on to other parts of his body. There we go. Just like that. Mm -hmm. You're so good. Yes, you are. Yeah. One other thing that you can do is use um, a little brush, just like a um, mascara brush like this, and you can use it to gently massage the face and the forehead, just like that, just very gently brush the face. I'm convinced that dogs can experience ASMR as well, and I have I have used these little brushes to brush Remy's face until he has completely melted and has been hypnotized and fallen asleep. These brushes can also be useful to brush the ears, as long as you're very gentle. You obviously very superficial just on the exterior part of the ear, never going deep at all. But that can be very relaxing for the dog to get a little brush like that. I very much like to his forehead and rub my fingers all around it just like that. Make sure he's nice and relaxed. You know, as I've given you many techniques to use today, there are no hard and fast rules with massaging your dog. You'll find the techniques that work best for you. What's important is spending time with your dog and helping them unwind and relax. It's a wonderful bonding activity, and I know your dog will appreciate it. I hope this video has been as relaxing for you as it has been for Remy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'm pretty new to making ASMR videos, and I'm exploring my style, and I would love to have you along for